G'day, I'm Tim Thompson. The staple has been around for many, many years, and love it or hate it, it seems to be the best and easiest and most simple solution for attaching wire to a fence post. Or is it? You put a little bit of pressure on the fence, you wiggle it up and down, and there goes your staple. Now you've got metal on the ground where your stock are grazing, you can get hardware disease, and you've got loose fences that you're constantly replacing. We've always thought that staples are the best way to go, but I'm trying a new product today that challenges that assertion and might even take over as the optimum way to attach fence wire to any kind of post there is. If you like these videos, please hit the little subscribe button down there, give it a thumbs up, you've got no idea how much that helps. And if you can't wait for next week's video, there's plenty of curated content also on timthompsonmedia.com.au where you've got a full library of all my old videos, links to suppliers and lots, lots more. Now for a long time staples have been the perfect solution to the problem of attaching wire to a fence post. But there's always been a few inherent problems. The first is the barbs on the staple to hold them into the post are located straight up and down. So when you're putting the staple into the post, you've always got to put it off to an angle so that the barbs don't make their own groove and just simply fall out of the post. The second problem with the staple is that it does corrode over time in the post. The first part of the staple that's going to corrode is this very small barbed area. So it actually corrodes away over time and you end up with a staple without barbs holding it in the post. The third problem, and the problem that a lot of people don't think of, is that when the staple is in the post properly, it should always be hanging out a fair way so that it doesn't pinch the wire. That means that the barbs are only ever in a short way inside the post. Yet they're the things that do the majority of the holding in. Added to which, when you have cattle and heavy animals that like to put their head through the wire, they don't just push on the wire, they also spread it. And so that creates a walking motion of the staple and the barbs actually help the staple walk out of the post. So there are problems. Maybe there's a better idea, maybe there's a solution. That's exactly what Nicole and Rod Davidson from Davos Engineering in beautiful Casterton, Victoria, happen to think. Now, Davos Engineering is well known for supplying locals with all their fabrication and engineering needs. So it was only natural that when Rod and Nicole's fences became stressed by their livestock, they thought up a solution. Let's have a look at their solution and see how ingenious this idea is. So behold, what I think is pure genius, Davos fencing clip. Now I came across these on a shoot for another product that I was reviewing. And I saw them and I reached out to Nicole and the team at Davidson Engineering and I said, can I have a look? And they've sent me a whole sample pack of their fencing clip. And I think just the pack itself is an indication of the quirky, ingenious nature of this family. Let's have a look at how the pack even solves a problem in farming. If you're like me, you've got thingamabobs for everything. And there's only so many containers that you can take around on the back of the ute before it starts looking like you're selling Tupperware. In this container, I have wire clips. I've got a twitcher. I've got offcuts of wire because I forgot that. I've got, oh, here we go. Some old staples that may have fallen out of a post. And I've also got wire clips used to connect your steel posts to sheet mesh. Rummaging around in something like this is really inconvenient and it's kind of a, a bad way to work. Now normally I throw packaging away, you know that, but when I opened this box I was like, oh my goodness, here's an indication of the kind of thought that these people put into what they do. And it honestly, like this is probably the only packaging I'll ever include in a review, I swear to God. It just shows the absolute good thought of these people in what they do. Have a look at this. I've now got a box with four compartments from a different sizes of screws, from a different sizes of clips, and my little insulators for electric wire. And I can carry that round in the paddock. When I've finished using it, it collapses back down. Whoops. Put it in the shed for next time. And if I am really stupid, and I mean really stupid, there's even instruction missions. 
Now, as you no doubt know, replacing a staple in a hardwood post is a bit of an ask if you don't want to bend it along the way. So, what's the alternative to doing something that's pretty tricky and awkward? Not only that, but you can put a fair crack in your post when you replace the staple, because it's old and it's not really flexible anymore. So now let's try out Davo's fencing clip. Now you can use a range of size of screws. You can go from a 65 to a 35 mil screw. We might use a slightly longer one on this post because it's a bit old and rotten. So all you have to do is hang the clip on the wire that you want to attach to the post and then screw it in, securing the wire firmly but still allowing it to move around and not break on the post. And I reckon anyone can install these fencing clips with about 30 seconds of instruction. That means that more people can help you out when they come over for your Sunday roast. Softwood posts like this treated pine one here are even easier to use the clip on because the screws go in just so easily and so fast. Most people, some could, but most people could not drive a staple into a post quicker than I can drill in one of these clips. Now it's the next application that I think the Davos fencing clip comes into a league of its own. There might be some of you that recall this fence end assembly called the fence stay that we reviewed a few weeks back. If you don't, have a look, it's a pretty good little unit. But like a lot of things these days, people are moving across to steel posts and this one features a particularly small post. So twitching this wire off around the post, look, it is an option, but over time the wire can move up and down and if those twitches break they can fall on the ground and create problems for you. So this time we're going to put the Davos fencing clip over the top of the wire like normal but we're going to use a steel screw with the thread all the way up to the top and we're simply going to screw into the post. And this system doesn't involve twisting copious amounts of wire around the post and creating problems for later on. So this is a really good thing and I think with steel posts, Davos fencing clip comes into its own. What I found is that Davos fencing clips also work really well with electric fencing. From securing the insulated earth wires that you run under gates, right through to securing the actual electric wires on the posts. All right, so now the challenge is to use Davos fencing clip with the actual electric wire of an electric fence. And what I've got here is I've got a wood shield post that I'm using Davos fencing clips on because obviously if you've seen the wood shield review, the Davos fencing clip allowed this post to be 100% waterproof even when it was submerged in a dam for two weeks, which is pretty impressive. But we have to modify it slightly to use it with an electric wire. So let's look at the process of how to do that. And I think if I'm going to make any comment on how this product can be improved, I think this is the place it can be improved. It's not saying it doesn't work, I just think there's room for improvement. So let's have a look at how we go about this. All right, so we want to set up this electric fence. So we've got a couple of options. We can come down and we can use the standard screw-in standoffs that we use on any old fence. We can also use the standard insulator bullnose clips that we can use on any old fence. Now they could also be used on the wood shield post, but Davos fencing clip offers an alternative to that. There's just one shortcoming. You've got to be able to count. You have to actually thread on a piece of insulation for every post before you tighten up your wire. Because what you then do is you use an oversized Davos fencing clip. This is the normal size, that's the insule clip, that's the insulation sized clip. And what you actually do is you attach this piece of insulation using the clip to the post. And that then provides you with a much cheaper alternative to buying all of those snap-in post insulators that you're used to. So it will save you money. It just requires a bit of threading on to begin with. One, two, five, three, seven, gotta start again. 17, 18, 
Okay, now that they're all installed, all I have to do is strain up this wire, make sure I choose the end insulator, push them all down, and screw them onto each post successively. I bring down the train of insulators, one for every post below, until I get to the last one. I hang the insule clip over the top of that, and then just as before, attach it to the post. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not going anywhere. So I love this. We've got a small family-based manufacturing business in the west of Victoria, working out of a shed on a farm, producing a product that could revolutionise the way that we attach wire to posts. The Davos fencing clips not only allow us to use new products like the wood shield post and achieve 100% waterproofing, but it also allows us to do away with expensive insulators on posts and use something that I reckon is a lot more secure and a lot stronger in the long term than a piece of plastic that's been nailed or screwed into your post. Let me know what you think of this product in the comments. I actually think it's really brilliant. I got excited about this. I contacted them because I really wanted to review this product. I think the one improvement that we could possibly make is to maybe spiral cut these insulators so that you can actually put them on electric fences after they've been strained up because that is one frustrating thing about using this technology. But using these steel clips to attach wires to posts for cattle, for horses, for sheep, it just makes sense. If you're using old hardwood posts, you know how what a pain it is to put staples into a hardwood post. This is no trouble at all. And if you do like this product, look, they're such a small company, they don't even have a website. They have a Facebook page. I have linked to it on my website, timthompsonmedia.com.au. So you should be able to get in touch with Nicole and the guys down there at Davos Fencing Clips. Um, but in the meantime, let's just celebrate this bit of ingenuity. If you like this video, please hit the little subscribe button down there. Give it a thumbs up. You've got no idea how much that helps. And hey, go to timthompsonmedia.com.au, get on to Nicole and the team at Davos Fencing Clips because they're a fantastic product and they deserve our support. Until next week, I'll see you again.